Welcome to the North Woods of Maine. This state is home to so many interesting and amazing sport fish species, such as brook trout, landlocked salmon, and of course, cusk, I think. While Maine is an incredible fishery in whole, it is also home to a plethora of unwanted invasives. So, on today's mission, our goal is to fish four lakes in hopes to wrangle every single invasive fish species here in the state of Maine, in hopes to film the ultimate multi-species catch and co. Yeah. Well, we got the boat in the water, got the donkeys in the hand. This is a true New England multi-species fishing mission. Stop number one. This is a super deep, ultra clear little reservoir. And what we're after here is a nice keeper smallmouth. We're not gonna keep any big smallmouth. We're not gonna keep any old fish. Um, we're looking for a nice 12 incher and that's it. Something with a, a good amount of meat on it, but something also not too big. I don't like keeping bass, but for the sake of this experiment, that being to see which invasive species tastes the best, we are gonna keep one small jaw. And this just so happens to be one of my favorite places. There's an overabundance of small here, so we're not hurting the ecosystem by taking out one little bronze here too. I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs in a one level house. That's a good fit. That's a good fit. Wow, that's a good fit. Here he comes. Look at that. Look at that good fish. Oh, come on. Got him. That's a good one. No, he just pulled hooks. Oh my god, that was a giant. That was a giant. How did I freaking lose that fish? That was an absolute giant. There's a big one. That's this is gonna be a good fish right here. Got him. Got him. Oh, good fish. Finally a nice one. We are hooked up. This might be too big of a fish to keep, but it's always fun to get a couple nice smallmouth in before you find dinner. Wow, it's a good fish. Not a bad one. Look at that water. It's so clean. You can see that fish 10 feet down before she even comes up. Yeah, quality three pounder. Just had him hooked a little weird. <laughs> Good fish, man. Come here, bud. All right, come here. Let's go. First smallmouth of the day. More so than a multi-species catch and cook. Today is going to be all about chasing after different fish in three different locations. Like I mentioned prior, this is a super deep clear water smallmouth and late trout fishery with an occasional salmon or two but we're after the small today. This one's a little bit too big. It's good to keep these fish alive and put them back in the water so they can uh, keep producing good genetics. Back you go, smallmouth. Live to see another day. You will not be table fair. Back down 30 feet she goes. That was a fun fight. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. That's an old fish. Wow, amazing. There he is. Oh. This might be a good eater size right here. Decent size, oh yeah. Not too big, but not too small. This is perfect, this is the fish we need. Homie wanted that, that freaking jerk bait. Oh, just kidding, there goes dinner. The bite's real tough right now. We've got no wind, the sun is starting to get high. It's really hot, and originally I was getting some good bites because it was still early into the morning, but as it's getting warmer, the bite's slowing down, but I am getting quite a few nibbles on the all white jerk baits. Some of them are engaging it and they just will stop right before they're about to clamp onto the thing, but it's still looking good. I mean, I'm getting some fish to react. That's all that, that you can ask for. And I just lost one. So let's see if we can lose a couple more. No, 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 no. Come on, come back. Oh God, I can't lose two rods in a week. I'm a mess right now, dude. I'm just trying to catch a fucking fish. Ah! That was so sick. Just ate it on the, on the ball. 
good one too. <laughs> Not an eater size. It's either like they're one inch in here or they're pretty big. Wow, it's a good bass. <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever get a fish big enough to eat. <laughs> or small enough to eat, I should say. I'm just opposed to keeping one this big, mainly because I like to come here and have fun and catch these guys and want the genetics to stay in here. Good fish. Oh, look at that. One for the rattling Ned. Nice three pounder, ate it on the way down. Following the jerk bait and finish them off on the Nedley. This is usually the opposite problem I have. I'm trying to get a little one, but all I can get is these nice three pounders. What the hell? I know this might seem contradictory to the whole invasive species narrative, but there is a lot of anglers here in Maine that enjoy catching these smallmouth and they are against, you know, the catch and kill mandate in some of these lakes. I'm also the same way. I like releasing these fish. They're already very much well established. They're not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna give them a nice drink. So with that in mind, I'm gonna put a tag in this fish and if you come to this lake, I'm not gonna name the lake, but if you come to this lake, you know where we're at and you catch this fish, it'll have a blue tag on it. And I want you guys to read off the number to me. Uh, and if you catch it, I'll, uh, I don't know, give you like a hundred dollar gift card to Guggen Squad or I don't know, maybe some tackle retailer. So if you catch a, a nice smallmouth bass, with that tag in this lake, shoot me a DM on Instagram and uh, I'll give you something. I'll hook you up with something. Thank you for playing, girl. I appreciate you. Sick. Yeah, uh, I know it's so contradictory. You know, I'm, I'm talking about how these fish are not supposed to be here. We're actually gonna keep one today, a small one, and, and cook them up. But I think there's also a, a nice beauty and balance with fishing or any outdoor activity, whether it be hunting or you know, cast in a line. You gotta make sure those big breeders, whether they be, you know, breeders on land or in the ocean or in, in the lake, they stay alive. So that way, you know, you can come here to a lake like this and, and enjoy the fishery overall. But anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. I just want to explain why we we're doing that. Also, hopefully I don't get a ticket for doing that. I'm sure some people are probably like, why the hell would you ever tag a smallmouth? We hate smallmouth in Maine. Here's the thing, and this is the uh, uncomfortable truth. These smallmouth are not going anywhere. I could keep every single smallmouth that I catch today, and uh, there'll still be an absolute titty ton. But let's keep fishing and see if we can get a dink. <laughs> That's a keeper. That's a keeper all day. That's a fish I'm comfortable bringing home. Nice little 12-incher. Got some meat on her. Not too big, but big enough for some loins. Wow, she just snapped my line. Okay, didn't appreciate that. And now you're really going in the cooler. Well, we got our first invasive species for the day. Let's see if we can get one more smallmouth, then jump ponds and head to spot number two and attempt to catch the largemouth bass and the crappie. The last stop of the day is gonna be the most difficult and that is catching a pike. Normally pike are fairly easy, but in here they're very invasive and a lot of people kill them. So there's not too many, but I have a good feeling. Once the sun gets really high and it gets flat, it's usually when the pike start chewing. as well oh yeah not too big not too small nice two pounder got some good loins on him look at the loins on that guy yeah quality eating fish a little bit more meat than the last one cool let's bring him on home all right second small has been degilled that way it can uh, bleed out and we're not gonna get that really nasty fishy taste it's always important to bleed the fish out you know obviously euthanize them bleed them out and put them on ice as soon as possible. Those are two very important steps to having a very good tasting filet. And that way you're not gonna get that nasty fishiness taste that some people don't really like uh, when they say they don't prefer fish. They just probably haven't had it prepared or cooked or handled correctly. So we've got our two small, let's head to a shallower water spot, see if we can get a large mouth and a crappie. And then after that, the toothy invasive pike.
too. This is the home of two of my favorite invasives. Invasives, air quotes, the LMB, the largemouth bass, Larry, the big mouth, green goblins, big mamas, and of course, black crappie. Black crappie are actually pretty invasive. I don't think we're gonna use air quotes for crappie because they're, they are pretty invasive. I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably getting a lot of folks right now uh, dropping comments saying, wait a minute, why, why is he calling small and largemouth? invasives in Maine. Like Maine Department of Natural Resources actually introduced a lot of smallmouth and largemouth in lakes. Yes, true, but where we're at right now, which is the northern region, which is predominantly cold water fisheries, where they're trying to keep the bass out of these waterways and keep the trout in, they are very much considered invasive. And matter of fact, one bill that they're trying to pass for the northern region right now, as this video is being filmed and edited, is they're trying to pass a bill that states, you can have a tournament up here, but every fish has to die. So no fish can be brought back alive. It sucks, it's like really stupid. Like if I were to say something like <laughs> that'd be like this bill that they're trying to pass. Really dumb, minute amount of brain cells required to even think that's a good idea. Now I understand their intent and I applaud them for trying. But like I said previously, these fish aren't going anywhere. The fish that are already established are mainly in these warm water systems. This lake is not gonna be a place where trout are gonna thrive. But I get it, they're invasives, and uh, you know what, we'll make a couple mainers happy today and we're gonna keep a couple, even though we might tag a couple as well. Come on. Ooh, this is something big. This is something giant. White perch. Not what we're after, but we may take this guy. Well, I th we've got a uh, actually a native fish, but we can still keep these. We might bring them uh, to the dinner table regardless because they are one of my favorites, New England fish to eat. This right here, most Texans would probably mistaken as a naked white bass. It's a white perch. Uh, they look like white bass, but without the stripes, and they are fantastic eating native, but you can still keep them. So we're gonna keep one of these just because. Uh, I got a little multi-species slash invasive catch and cook going. So, I mean, if they're here and they're willing to bite, they're going in the freezer. Just letting them bleed out a bit. Another fish for dinner. Straight on ice. That's the way to do it. All right, let's see if we can get a large mouth and maybe a crappie if we're lucky. Oh my gosh, you should see the graph right now. It's absolutely insane. This might be a large mouth if I'm lucky, and it might be a nice, like, little 12 incher. I don't know. It feels like a. Oh, it's a yellow perch. Another style of perch. These are also native, but you can keep them. And they are one of my favorite freshwater fish to eat. That, alongside, of course, salmon, trout, and uh, voila. Be gone, perch. Got ourselves a bona fide meat haul today. Wow, there's a lot of fish over here. My. No, there's not. I literally just checked. Oh, wow, look at them all. Look at them come out of the grass. Ooh, that's a good fish. I don't know what it is. Hopefully it's either a big crappie or a big yellow perch. It's big. Oh, what the hell? It's a crappie. It's a giant crappie. It's a giant crappie. Oh my gosh. This is the, definitely the biggest main crappie I've ever caught. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> Dude, that is a huge crappie. Yet another invasive. For Maine, this is an absolute unit of a black crappie. Such cool fish. Very fun to catch. I grew up catching crappie actually one of the first videos i've ever posted on this channel back in 2009 was crappie on cranks and i still love them it's an absolute mega <laughs> so cool oh my god that is absurd wow that is a monster crappie be gone with you meat once they go on ice in the cooler, we no longer refer to them as fish or any sort of species. They become now meat. And uh, you also become the meat hauler. Meat hauler, meat. Let's get some more. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh my gosh, dude, what do I have? This thing is pulling drag. What the hell do I have? I wasn't recording. Oh my gosh. This is either a giant crappie a giant white perch or a large mouth. Oh my gosh, what the f do I have? Oh, it's a giant white perch. Oh my lord. Dude, these white perch fight so freaking hard. 
another piece of meat. We're only gonna keep probably a couple of each species and uh, go on our merry way, see if we can get a, a decent little largemouth. And then of course, the pike. I don't know what the daily limit is on them, but uh, you can keep quite a few per angler, per licensed angler. They got like a ton of meat on them. You can probably tell, look at the freaking back straps on that. Ooh, some decent loins. And they're pretty and they're fun to catch, especially on ultralight. Let's release them on ice. Something else pretty big, wow. Another big crappie, I hope. Oh my gosh, I think it's another big crappie. Oh my gosh, it is. It's another monster crappie. But not as big as the other one, but still a quality fish. Wow, dude. These are some heads for Maine. Oh, that thing is pretty good, honestly. <laughs> Especially in the ultralight. Wow, that's so much fun. Look at that. <laughs> I'm gonna keep one more of these dudes and probably release the next. I know you're not supposed to release them, but it's not mandatory. You don't have to keep them. Another nice black crappie. They're in this grass, they almost like yellow and black. They got really cool patterns on them. I appreciate them. I think they're fun game fish, despite the fact they're not supposed to be here. There she goes. Dude, this is madness. Another big yappy. Oh my gosh, I've never seen crappie fight this hard. They are like, like, just ready to go. Smoked it too, holy. <laughs> At this point, I'm just kind of enjoying the moment, you know? We kind of have enough meat as far as crappie goes. And I'm out here just trying to get me a couple freaking nice slabs. Oh, there we go. There we go. That might be our large mouth. Oh yeah, that's a perfect size. That's a perfect size for the C and C. Get over here, Largy. Get over here, Largy. Come here, bud. Wow. These guys almost fight as hard as the smallmouth do. My lord. Come here, bud. In the boat. Nice little 13 incher. Perfect. What do you got there? Caleb's hooked up in the back. Non-native, number three, and a perfect eating size. I've personally never eaten largemouth for many good reasons, but I am interested to see how this little guy tastes. I've had smallmouth before because, you know, accidentally you, you kill a couple small fish in deep, it happens. You don't want them to go away. So this is, uh, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. We've got a nice variety of meat in the meat locker. It is time to attempt to catch our final invasive. This next invasive is a true nuisance up here in Maine. They were introduced somehow, somewhere in southern Maine in, the 19, in 1970, in the early 70s. They've been a love-hate relationship for many Maine anglers for decades now. I personally love them, but I also don't mind to eat them as well. Let's get after it and I'll meet you guys there. Zone number three. continues. We are at our final spot of the day. Wieners, this is the grand finale. This is where it all could come to a close. Let's just reminisce on everything we've caught so far. We've tackled the smallmouth bass. We've caught perch. We've caught white crappie, white perch. And we've of course caught the largemouth. The last piece to the meat puzzle is a northern pike. Love them or hate them, they're here. We are on top of them, and we're gonna see if we can bring one home for table fare. Now, normally, Caleb is usually equipped with the camera, but in a few short moments, he will be equipped with a rod and reel because he's gonna help me, hopefully, try to catch one of these elusive, snaky, elongated, dragging-looking monsters, which, by the way, tastes pretty good. Caleb, let's do this, put her there. A little teamwork effort. This is the fourth quarter. Let's see if we can make it happen. Thus far, we've done really good. If we catch a pike now, this would be our final chapter that closes our story of the invasive beat mission. Let's get it. Jack them too if you get bit. Their mouths are really, really tough. Oh, I got one on me. Something's on me. You see that? Oh, big pike, big pike. Is that, did you see that? That underneath me looks like a pike. See that thing right there? Oh, oh my, I just got throttled. Oh my gosh, I got throttled. 
Holy f I just got absolutely annihilated. Still that little like deal tied on. Let's see what these are. On? Pike? Pike? Yep. 100% pike. 100% pike. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god, dude. No giant, <laughs> giant largemouth. Like a fucking four pound largemouth in Maine. Put it there. Oh my gosh. Dude, what? That is so weird. Well, you dinner tonight. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> That's like a freaking four pound push off fish. So we're not gonna tell you what that number is, but if you come to push off and you catch a fish with a blue tag, a largemouth bass, a blue tag, holler at me. Curious to see what this fish does, if it gets caught again, if it grows bigger. Dude, it's such a good fish. Wow, that has a quality large amount. Nice job, man, put it there. <laughs> yeah, super, oh, here we go. Dude, big large mouth, whole school of them. There's tons of fish down there. Whatever they are, they, look, they don't look small either. Are you in it, can you feel it? No, I'm, I'm definitely in it, oh. Yeah, I'm definitely in it, it feels weird. Like a, either a lone clump of grass or it's, oh, there's one. God, dude, these are giant fish. These are giant fish. These are all big largemouth, dude. This is insane. This is a giant largemouth. Oh my gosh. Oh my, dude, for push -off, are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's go. We found a school of giant largemouth in 10 feet of water. Holy sh <laughs> oh my gosh. It's crazy how things work. We sat out here on a pike mission, but we just so happened to stumble upon one of the biggest schools of like healthy three to four pound main large mouth I've ever seen. There's like probably 20 other fish about this size. And what's funny is they're only sitting at about 10 feet. My biggest large mouth of the day, an absolute beauty. We're gonna throw a tag in this one. By the way, we are fishing Push Our Lake. It's absolutely no secret. And if you happen to come here, and catch this fish, let me know. There's a tag in her, it's a blue tag. We're gonna get a measurement and a weight on this guy. And if you catch him, let me know how long she was, how much she weighed, and be sure to send her back. And I will give you a nice reward. Even though these fish are introduced and they are non-native, it's good to send them back. There's a huge group of anglers up here in Northern Maine that love to catch these fish and release them in warm water fisheries. Let's put them back. All right, here she goes. Back you go, tag bass. Just keep eating. <laughs> oh, there, oh, there it is, right there. Oh my God, that's absurd. Bomb right, right next to me. Big cast. That is f absurd. Look, they're coming up for it. Look at that. They heard the splash. They're coming up for it. Do I have one? Oh, I got one. Big it. Dude, this is nuts. This is absolutely, you're good. Just keep fishing, you're good. It's just like a three pounder, you're good. Oh my God, this is freaking crazy. Freaking three pounder. Put a tag in this guy too. Choke the jig. Let's see how long she is. Got him. Oh, let's go, dude, let's go. No. Dude, we're on some main meat. 18 inches, put in the back, three pounder, I'm just gonna guess. <laughs> this is crazy, dude. This is crazy. I'm gonna try the matter rig. See if something really small and subtle. Like, I mean, we're not even seeing all the fish for real. Like, there's a lot. A lot down there. Got him. Good one. <gasps> crank, 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 crank. Still got him. Little guy, of course. I'm on two. I'm on two. <laughs> Mine's good. Oh my gosh, mine's decent. Oh my gosh, first cast of the night. Just a little adjustment. <laughs> yeah, it's good, man. No, it's okay. I got him. I just want to see him first before I lose him. God, wait, dude. It's mine like a small mouth. It's mine like a small mouth. Oh, this is absolutely wild. Th couldn't even. Oh, yeah, it's a small mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I got him. Oh, he swiped at it. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Holy shit. 
Sorry, bud. Put that down there. That's a big one right there. Oh my gosh. I think I just got eaten. Oh yeah. Big, giant, absolute giant. I watched that one eat. Oh my gosh, I watched him eat. That was so nuts. My drag was so loose from that last fish. Oh, come on. I mean, come on. It's all good. Just keep fishing. We already got a couple shots. So just keep fishing. You're good. Oh, another four pounder. Another four pounder. This is absolutely insane. On the my least favorite lake. Oh my goodness. That's a 20 inch fish. That's my biggest of the day. 20, fish, 20 inch fish weighing in at four, four, three. Putting her back. She ain't leaving this spot, I'll tell you that much. Golly. Back at Camp Claw, we've got our invasive fish. I've got my little flame buddy here. DD. Yes, I am also DD, and uh, we are going to get these bad boys prepped and ready for the grill. Hi. That's Milo. Daddy. Yeah, it's Milo and Daddy. Thank you for the intro. I didn't think they got the hint when they, when they saw the beginning of the video. Daddy. And that's fishy too. She's so smart, man. Smarter than me. <laughs> You're a big help. Thank you. <sighs> Welcome to the Bass Barn Catch and Cook. We're doing this fraternity bachelor style. I'm in my barn right now, so I don't have my full utensils and utilities, but what I do have is this instant air fryer. These things are like the Swiss army knife for cooking. I know a lot of food enthusiasts and connoisseurs are probably rolling their eyes at this, but really, all things considered, this air fryer is absolute money. We've got our fillets adjacent to the air fryer, and we've got our seasoning. We're gonna keep it simple. What we really want out of this experiment, this multi-species invasive fish catch and cook experiment is to get the full flavor of the fish. So what we're doing is we're doing a little bit of seafood seasoning, which is probably similar to like, kind of like a, an old bay. And then we're going to coat our filets with some olive oil to make sure that that uh, seasoning sticks. I don't wanna overwhelm it. I don't wanna do a batter or fry the fish because you really lose the true taste. And therefore we're just going to basically keep it very simple and straightforward. The last catch cook we did for striper was a little more elegant. I, mean, I think we incorporated some herbs and some spices. But with this, it's just a little freaking Hannaford's uh, seasoning and a little bit of olive oil. Let's get to cracking. While we missed out on our opportunity to catch an invasive pike, we do have five different fish here, three of which being non-natives. Start off with, we've got a native, that being white perch. Another native, yellow perch. This one right here is going to be our smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and lastly, the poster child of today, black crappie. Oh, hit that with some olive oil. Oil. Do you say oil or oil? I say oil. Actually, let's do all of this. And then marinate it on the, well, we are doing this very sloppily. Oh, sprinkle some of that dust. Some of that dust on there. Ooh, get some of that dust on there. Going a little heavy on the, on the seasoning, but why not, you know? White poich in one corner. I'm drowning this in the olive oil. Put a little too much on there, honestly, but hey, whatever. The air fryer will help cook it off a little bit. Bing bong, ba boom. That is, this is our smallies. 
I know I'm doing this very terribly, but you got to think. We've been fishing all day. It's freaking 9 p.m. All I want to do is eat, so I'm just throwing this seasoning on as fast as I can. Caleb's getting a call right now, by the way. My last meal was a Dunkin' Donuts sandwich put in the microwave, shoved away in, in some freaking radiation. And uh, that, that meal occurred right around, I think it was like, I don't know, 6.30 this morning. So I'm just doing everything I possibly can to get this food in the air fryer and ready to cook. Tossing her in. And now we wait. My heavens, there's not a more beautiful sight in the world. Which one should I try first? I'm gonna do the white perch. I've had white perch before. It's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good, okay? We're gonna end up throwing most of this meat on a taco with some avocado and some hot sauce and uh, a tortilla. Uh, but first we gotta try it straight up. We gotta go raw dog in it. We, we, gotta, we gotta go in this raw. Try the actual flavor of the meat first. White perch. You've had white perch, right? We've had white perch. Yeah. Wow. So it's not too much seasoning. I know it may look like it, but it's really not that much. White perch, although it's not invasive, it's delicious. Let's go for the yellow perch. I believe this is a good yellow, yellow perch filet right there. We're steaming. Nothing quite like a steaming crispy fresh off the air fryer. Yellow perch, I've had my whole life. It's always a town of time. Still remain so, even in Maine. Delicious. White perch, yellow perch, bomb dig. They both get like, honestly, in my opinion, 10 out of tons. Let's go for the crappie. I've had, so here's the thing. I've had Texas crappie before, but I've never had Maine crappie. So this should be interesting. Oh, these were big fish too. The crappie we're catching were averaging between 13 to 14 and a half inches, which is a sizable fish up here in Maine, seeing as they were only introduced maybe a couple decades ago. It's not like they've been here for hundreds of years. Give a little blow. Oh, I don't know why, but that was significantly better than both the white and yellow. Let me, let me just try that again. Make sure my palate isn't deceiving me. Wow. It's sweet. It's like sweeter. It's got more flavor to it. And even looking past the Cajun seasoning and the olive oil, I can taste it. That's so good. I'm gonna give that one an 11 out of 10. No joke, that's way better than Texas crappie too. I don't know if it's because we've got cleaner water up here or if just those crappie hanging in the grass or eating a certain type of bait makes their meat taste better, but that was absolutely delicious. Now here comes the curveball. I've got two other non-native slash invasives, one being largemouth smallmouth. This one is the largemouth. I've actually never, this is kind of a crazy moment. I've never eaten largemouth. I don't do that. That's not my thing. I like catching, but also then releasing. It's one of my favorite fish ever. So I, I dare not keep them, but in this case, I feel a little bit better about it. It's a small fish, whatever. Let's look past it. First time eating largemouth. Hopefully I don't love it. Wow, damn, that's really good. <laughs> the large amount tastes delicious. Oh no, <laughs> I was afraid of that. I was hoping I was gonna hate it. I don't condone keeping large mouth, but if you're doing it legally, I suppose I understand. I always am an advocate too, like if it's a smaller fish, as long as it's over the size limit or in between the slot or whatever, it's probably gonna taste better. A big four pound, five pound fish up here in Maine is not gonna taste good, flat out. Don't be keeping any of my eight pound large mouth. Here's our last non-native invasive to Maine. Smallmouth bass. I've had smallmouth before, but it's been quite some time. Let's give it a shot. Damn, dude. They're all really good. And I think they're all good because they've been on ice all freaking day. As soon as we caught them, we put them, you know, straight in the water, bled them out. There isn't a single fish in this basket I don't like. Matter of fact, what I think is crazy is the two fish that I didn't really think was better than the other three were the white perch and yellow perch, and those are usually my, my two favorites. So anyway, that concludes today's multi-species invasive main catch and cook. Wow, what a mouthful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, we'll make it happen. Maybe we'll do an ocean side catch and cook where we get like a variety of fish, like a black sea bass compared to a striped bass, 
or maybe we get a bluefin tuna and compare it to a dolphin. I don't know. We'll make it happen. Drop a comment. And uh, yeah, until next time, we'll see you in the next episode. We're going to make some fish tacos and absolutely munch. Peace and out, signing out. Thank you for watching. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. Got a scale.